Hello everybody, this is the video for, for the MEC215 Mechanical Engineering Design. Uh, today we're going to cover the fatigue analysis, um, the simple case, the fatigue under the simple loading or completely reversed loading. So in this case, our loading, we have the variation of loading, sigma a, but the average or the mean value of the loading is zero. So it's kind of changed along the zero value with the positive and negative amplitude the same, sigma a. Um, for this uh, simple loading, we um, use uh, uh, SE di SN diagram to analyze uh, two different situations. One is a uh, infinite life. So this is when the loading, the loading is uh, uh, sigma a, is less than the endurance limit, SE. So uh, for the problem, we have to calculate what is our loading okay, from the uh, force, and if we find the stress. Uh, the second part is we have to find out the endurance limit, and we do the comparison. If the loading is larger than the endurance limit, so if the loading is somewhere in between, then we have to look at the finite life situation. When we calculate the loading, sometimes we have to consider the stress concentration. So that's how uh, everything comes together. So first step is let's look at SN diagram. This is a, a SN diagram for steel. So for um, mild steel or different steels, normally the curve comes at a flat point. This is so uh, this has our it's called our endurance limit. So after a million times, if the uh, component can sustain a million cycle, then it go can go forever. It never does a break. This is a very good property for steel. So you only have to test, say, up to a million times. You, you don't have to uh, test uh, uh, any anymore. And uh, um, the other point important, if it's a uh, uh, finite life, I have to look at another factor over here, F, factor F, to find uh, exactly this line and where uh, under a certain loading where that limit cycle is. Okay, that's for the final uh, analysis. So first look at the in, um, endurance limit for the infinite life. So for infinite life, uh, endurance limit is tested through standardized kind of sample in a perfect situation. So the sample is uh, carefully prepared. Um, and that value we call it SC prime. Uh, the SC prime normally is half of the atomic tensile stress. Uh, and sometimes uh, for the material very, very strong, um, it's saturated at 700 megapascal. Um, so from equation 6.8, you get this SC prime. Um, however, the actual component is uh, not really carefully prepared. Yeah? So you will have some um, uh, different uh, uh, preparation method, fabrication methods, a different geometry compared to the uh, standard sample. So in this case, we have to add some of the factors, adjusting factors. Um, most important ones are Ka, Kb, Kc. These are the three ones that you always have to uh, consider. The other ones um, are quite special, so uh, we have to only consider those ones um, at, at special situations. So if we got Ka, Kb, Kc, and Se prime, then we get an Se endurance limit. Then we can use this to compare our loading. So Ka is a surface factor. This is coming from um, how the sample is prepared. Uh, because in our bending or torsion situation, the largest stress is always on the surface, on the top or bottom of the uh, component. So that's why the stress is always high at the surface. So in this case, surface is normally uh, the, the first pa um, part to break down. Um, so if the uh, for the fatigue, if the surface is rough, then it's easier to generate small cracks than leads to larger cracks than leads to fatigue uh, failure. So that's why um, the different uh, machining method over here, different machining method, so table 6.2, for different machining method, you have a different factor A 
uh, we're using international unit so a is over here and b and we can use this 619 to calculate the ka from the table you have to use a table together with this um, uh, formula uh, together you get a ka uh, so if the surface is different you get a ka is different so normally this is a factor a little bit uh, um, less than one <coughs> Uh, size factor uh, because different part uh, if the part is larger then it will have a larger surface area larger area means it's easier to uh, some area will, will have have problems uh, so in this case larger area will be kind of uh, uh, penalized um, so we use the equation 620 uh, international unit uh, these two boarding ones so we take two different uh, uh, equations uh, using the diameter of the uh, component. If it's small, we use the top one. If the diameter is large, we use the bottom one to get a KB. Uh, however, there's a trap in, in this KB calculation. Um, this KB is only for bending and torsion. For exo loading, KB equal to 1. Uh, so there's some small print in the textbook that you have to be extremely careful and KB actually goes with KC so KC is about loading factor KC is how the component is loaded so for the extra loading in this case KC is take 0.85 so you can see in this case we don't consider KC uh, um, extra loading in KB but if it's extra loading KC will take 0.85 now for bending KC we don't consider. However, here we have to consider the bending with KB. <coughs> Torsion is the most complicated case. You have to consider KB and also KC. Torsion you have 0.59. Okay, so in three different loading, KB, KC always kind of count together. Uh, you have to take one or the other or both. So with KA, KB, KC, and uh, SC prime coming from the ultimate tensile stress, you get SC. So that's the endurance limit. Then you can compare the loading with the endurance limit. If it's uh, uh, less than, uh, if the loading is below here, then it has an uh, infinite lifetime. Uh, if the loading is above this endurance limit, then our lifetime is uh, here intersect with with our uh, line over that point so we need to figure out what exactly is that um, cycle so this is coming from uh, this group of equations 6 13 to 15 um, we need to find f f then we got ultimate tensile strength endurance limit we can get a and b then we put that in um, the next equation over here we have a and b then we know the cycle n so the first thing finding f f is called a fatigue stress fraction so use 618 the figure 618 uh, only needed to have the ultimate tensile strength of a material then we get f okay so if you have a larger or uh, uh, stress you normally have a smaller f so f determines this corner point okay how much is coming down from the potential stress um, and we already know this point so these two points draw a line so this basically is that line function so this this ff equal to a and b is a line function because this horizontal axis is in logmatic scale that's why uh, this is a log function uh, it's exponential function, sorry, it's an exponential function, but it's draw at a logmatic um, scale. So it, the exponential equation draw in log scale give you a linear uh, line. So um, from 618, you get an F, then you get an A and B uh, from 614 and 15 then use uh, 616 you get n that's your finite life 
So from endurance limit side, uh, from um, our uh, material limitation side, that's the, the two uh, part. Um, then from the um, loading side, um, normally you just have the sigma a, what's, whatever is given. Uh, but sometimes if you start from force and cross section area, um, there's a stress concentration factor we have to consider. It. So uh, let's have a look at the stress concentration. So if the geometry changes um, along the path when the stress is on, so the stress kind of have to bypass that area. So cause this area, the stress is actually bigger than you just use the force divided by this cross section area. So particularly this one, so the red part, it's the red part. Uh, this stress is larger than use the force to divide by cross section area. So you have to put a factor to uh, compensate for, for that. So that's KT. Um, for the normal stress, or KTS for the sharing stress. And this concentration factor uh, is coming from figures in uh, chapter 3. Okay, so the KT is reading from uh, D over W. D is the size of that small feature, small hole. Uh, w is the width of the parts. So we come with a group of figures um, in the attachment um, like this. Um, depends on the uh, geometry of the parts. That's all in A15 and uh, A16. So A15 will have like uh, 10 different figures with different uh, uh, geometries. Um, when do we apply KT? So when we do this uh, static loading, actually we don't ever talk about the KT because uh, for the material we are dealing with, in most cases with the ductile material, um, we don't use brittle material to make structured components because it doesn't really kind of survive. Uh, because for ductile material, the stress concentration is not used. The reason for that um, not using yet is because even you have stress concentration because ductile material it will deform then the stress will be released so that high stress is a theoretical one for the material that does not deform so for the brittle material so for the ductile material the stress concentration factor over here we don't use it uh, however if it's a ductile material in the fatigue analysis um, because we know the fatigue analysis the ductile material um, acting or performs uh, as a kind of brittle material. So we have to use this KT. Um, but the KT in this figure is a overly kind of uh, considered factor. So the actual concentration is not that big. That's why we come up with uh, another one, KF, called a notch sensitivity. So we got a KT from um, this figure. A15, A16, there's a bunch of them, or uh, 329, uh, you got KT from here. Um, then you have to find a Q, it's called a notch sensitivity uh, from figure 620, uh, is for the uh, normal stress, and then 621 is for the shear stress. This is for the shear, shear stress, KFS. Okay, so you get a, a Q, from this figure, so you look at the notch uh, radius, so the small uh, corners or the size of the small features, and uh, if the ultimate tensile strength is different, there's a, a bunch of different curves here, you take one of the curve, then uh, you can read the notch sensitivity uh, from there. So you got, say, the radius of certain values through here, then if the material is uh, uh, 60 kpsi or 0.4 uh, megapascal or uh, gigapascal, so 400 megapascal, you got your notch uh, sensitivity is about 0.7 ish. Then you put that Q over this equation 632, you get a KF. And KF is the factor you use to multiply with your um, loading. It's called a um, stress concentration. Okay, so Let's look at the example. So this is actually the uh, middle term exam uh, question. We look at A, B, C part of this question. So this is a material with a small feature, and it's a code drawn 
AISI, 1040 steel, on the uh, fluctuation is 28 Newton to uh, negative 28 Newton. So we need to get the fatigue safety factor based on infinite life. And if it's not infinite life, if it's not infinite life, then we have to estimate the number of cycles. Okay? So um, when we look at this um, uh, fatigue analysis, uh, always we have to look at the, the static loading condition. So we have to first say uh, it's safe uh, on the static loading. Then we go ahead look at the fatigue. For the simple loading, for the complete reverse loading, this is uh, almost all the always a true. The material was surviving the static loading. You can't fail uh, the static loading without failing the um, fatigue. But for the more complicated loading, it can fail the static loading while the fatigue is actually okay. So uh, first step, calculate the factor of safety based on yielding, so static loading condition. So our force, 28 kilonewton, negative 28 kilonewton. So from table A20, for that particular material, we got atomic tensile strength and uh, yielding strength. So um, the normal stress, because that's kind of just have a tension. Okay, so normal tension. The cross-section area here is a little bit smaller than the uh, 25. So you have 25 minus 6. That's how big the cross-section is. So 25 minus 6. And the plate thickness is uh, 10. Uh, so multiply with thickness. So that's the cross-section area. And this is the force. So the stress is... Uh, 147 megapascal. Then, like I said, for the static loading, we don't consider stress concentration factor. This is a ductile material. Uh, so how do we tell it's a ductile material or not? From the table A20, you can look at the consent, um, elongation of the material. If you go look at the table, um, the elongation of this material, if it's larger than 5%, then it is a, a ductile material. And most of these there in, in this table is all the steel in this table is a ductile material. So uh, in here, the safety factor is using the year stress to over the normal stress. So uh, you can see we, we learned the maximum shear stress theory and uh, vomis, use vomis stress to get distortion energy theory. So in this particular case, um, this equation over here, this one, the safety factor over here, is the same for both of the theory. You can, you can go pull out those two um, failure theory. And uh, uh, using the maximum shear stress, so here, maximum shear stress is half of the power max. And SY over power max, is basically, you can consider as a maximum shear stress theory. But if you look at the Vormis uh, stress theory, putting all the calculation in there, you find that's exactly the same thing. Uh, because this is a, um, on that curve, it's on the first quadrant, only one normal stress. All the other stress are zero, so the formal stress calculation and the, um, the maximum shear stress calculation they are identical at this particular point. So you got a safety factor of three point three, so very safe. Um, <clears throat> second step is determining the fatigue factor of safety based on the infinite lifetime. So in in this, you kind of have uh, two sides of calculation. You have to ca calculate the endurance limit. That's how strong the material is. Uh, secondly, you have to calculate the loading. That's how much force or, or stress is on the component. Then you compare these two. So for the endurance limit, um, from <coughs> equation 6, 8, so for, and most material, it's half of the uh, atomic tensile stress. Then you have to consider Ka, Kb, and Kc. Because it's exo loading, so Kb is 1 and Kc is 0.85. Ka, it's code joule. So you have to take uh, um, the table over here. Let me come up with a table. It's a cable over here. It's code joule. Um, I can't remember which one you take. I think it's the first one. Let's see. 
Um, so when you actually review these questions, make sure you um, have the exam formula table with you and uh, trying to solve the uh, question based on that. So it's this these two numbers, um, uh, this this number. So 590, that's the uh, ultimate tensile stress. Um, this is A and B from the table. You got Ka equal to 0 0.8, uh, Kb equal to 1 because there's XL loading, and Kc equal to 0.85 because there's XL loading. Then actual SE is Ka, Kb, Kc, SC prime, which you get 200 and 8. Uh, 0.6 megapascal. So this is a limit, the endurance limit of the material. Uh, the second half is what loading do we have? So like we said, when we do static loading assays for the ductile material, we ignore that um, stress concentration. However, for fatigue analysis, we have to uh, go back and consider that factor. So uh, firstly, have to get the uh, KT. That's the stress concentration stuff. So from figure 620, uh, we have to get a Q. Then from the table A15, so A15 have a lot of tables. Uh, depends what geometry your part is. Um, you can find one that is uh, the same as yours. And you got a KT, look at it from that figure. So this two is just coming from the figure. With this two, um, um, then we have to look at the uh, uh, notch sensitivity. So that's, um, oh sorry, that's actually not sensitive is 620. Um, A15, this is for KT. So with not sensitivity and KT, you get a KF. This is the, um, for the um, fatigue analysis, that's, that's kind of the factor we have to consider. Um, it's 2.2, uh, that for our loading. So actual loading is uh, that loading this loading multiply with that concentration factor, or what called notch sensitivity. Yeah, so the actual loading is the uh, largest force minus smallest force divided by uh, twice of the um, area. So um, this is the uh, stress, and uh, we have to multiply with the Kf in this case. So the actual loading is kind of 2.2 times of uh, the force of the cross-section area. Okay. So that's 324 megapascal. So you compare this with the uh, SE. You find out this is bigger. So the, the our loading is larger than the endurance limit, which means so we got our safety factor is only 0.6, so, which means our, we don't have the infinite life. We only have finite life. And then we have to continue with the part C. If it's finite life, then we have to um, figure out what exactly is that life. From figure 618, we get an F. So 618, um, let me find out. Is this figure? This figure is coming from the ultimate tensile strength, so you get an F. Um, this is the corner point of your S. E, uh, SN diagram. And F. Then from equation four, uh, 614, 615, you can calculate A and B. If we have F, S, ultimate tensile strength, and SC. And from that, A and B, and uh, uh, our loading, A and B, we know our number of cycles. So in this, this question, we got a 30. Um, 3.8 thousand um, uh, cycles, so 30, 34 thousand cycles. Uh, that's, that's it for this question. So uh, overall, in this question, you have to look at static loading. In here, we don't consider stress concentration. For the infinite lifetime calculation, you calculate the endurance limit and also the loading. So this loading part, you have to consider stress concentration. For the fatigue, then if it doesn't have a uh, infinite life, so the factor uh, over there is less than one, then you use this group of equations to figure out what exactly is the cycle. Okay, so that's it for today. Um, we're gonna spend next one to look at the 
uh, complex loading.